Rocky versus Jake LaMotta. Make it happen, people. Hey there, guys. What's up? What's going on? It is Autobot Mike 18 here, back with another one of my old movie reviews. Guys, wow. I know I my last one was Inglorious Bastards. I am sorry that I've just been sporadic with the old movie reviews. I'm doing my best to get a, a couple more to you guys before the end of the summer, before I got to go back to school and then bye-bye me watching older movies that I haven't seen. But guys, I got a very special one. I got a movie that, again, like several other of these movies that I've reviewed over the summer, you guys have asked, pleaded, and begged me to watch. And the film I'm going to be talking about today in this video, guys, is Raging Bull. That's right, guys, Raging Bull. I have finally, finally watched this movie. Finally, I know. I have gotten people on, I've ranked Martin Scorsese's filmography and I've gotten people telling me, where's Raging Bull? That, that's got to be up there. I've just, I, in Blu-ray collection videos, I've, you know, pulled out Scorsese's films and said how much I like them. People have said, where's Raging Bull? Talk about Raging Bull. Raging Bull. Okay. A lot of you guys have wanted me to have asked me to watch this film uh, or recommended to me at least. Um, I even have personal friends in life who have told me to watch this movie. I have one filmmaker friend who goes to a different college who told me to watch this movie. I have one of my friends who's in the same class as me. This is one of his favorite films of all time. He said, watch this movie. And I, yes, I finally watched Raging Bull. I got it on uh, Blu-ray for my birthday recently, so I was glad I could watch it in HD glory and not illegally online. Shh, I watch it in HD glory. Thank you, Blu-ray. Um, so guys, yes, Raging Bull is, uh, was released in 1980. It was, um, I don't know what number film it was in Martin Scorsese's filmography. I know he did Taxi Driver beforehand. Uh, Last Temptation of Christ was after. He did, I think Kings of Comedy was also after. Several other, uh, several other of his movies I have to see. But, like, Scorsese always made, like, in the different decades, he always had, like, one film that stood at, like, the top. Like, the 70s was Taxi Driver. 80s was, without a doubt, Raging Bull. 90s was Goodfellas. 2000s was probably The Departed. And now this current age, we probably have Wolf of Wall Street, um, the, you know, 2010s, Wolf of Wall Street, probably, so far. Um, so, guys, Raging Bull focus is based on a true story. It's based on real-life boxer Jake LaMotta, who in this movie is played by, uh, why did I point at the logo? Robert De Niro uh, plays him in this film. And uh, Jake, the film is set, it's a period piece kind of, it's set in the 1940s, but it also, uh, we are given a glimpse of what Jake LaMotta is, uh, or what he becomes essentially in the 1960s, without spoiling anything, that film, the film opens and concludes with a scene in the 1960s. But for the majority of it, we focus on LaMotta and his rise to becoming a, you know, a big middleweight champion, essentially, of boxing. Grew up, essentially, in the Bronx. Uh, he has a brother who's on his, like, coaching team, played by Joe Pesci. His brother is named Joey. Um, he falls for this uh, really attractive blonde girl named Vicky, played by Kathy Moriarty. I said that wrong. Kathy Mor Moriarty. Morer Mor Mor Moriarty. I'm sorry. And we essentially focus not only on what this guy does in the ring, but specifically what his life is like outside the ring and what kind of person he is in a wonderfully, incredibly mind-blowing character study. Raging Bull. There you go. <laughs> Guys, yes, that is essentially the premise of Raging Bull, or at least that's all I'm going to say about Raging Bull for the time being. Uh, I, as you guys know, I don't spoil. I don't like to spoil my old movie reviews just in case some of you haven't seen this movie. I try to do this like a movie review for a movie that comes out, you know, in today's age. Like, you know, this movie just came out. Here you go. Boom. Um, so, guys, let's just get into some of, like, the hype and buzz surrounding Raging Bull and some other facts, I guess, um, that I found interesting while researching this film after I watched it. Uh, Raging Bull, yeah, came out in the 80s. De Niro won Best Actor at the Oscars. It is his second Oscar. He also won for Godfather 2. Uh, but this is his first Best Actor Oscar win. 
Um, when this film first came out, it was like polarized by the critics. Some people didn't like it, some loved it, and it's since become a timeless classic, most regarded as uh, Scorsese's best film. And then you have a handful of people that say it's like right up there with his best movies. Some even feel it's a complete masterpiece and might even be the best film of all time. Some look at it as that. A lot of people really, really love Raging Bull. And I found one incredibly interesting fact about this movie concerning Martin Scorsese's career. Because if this movie didn't happen, we probably would have never had Goodfellas or Casino, or The Departed, his films that came on later, because not only was he looking at making this his last feature film, but Robert De Niro approached him with the idea of making this Jake LaMotta story on the big screen, and Scorsese was at his lowest low. He was, I think, dealing with a cocaine addiction, and I think it was in and out of the hospital or something at some point, like the late 70s, and yeah, he didn't, I don't, I don't think he knew if he was going to make another movie or not. And he credits De Niro essentially with saving his life for him asking De Niro to, from De Niro asking him to make this movie together. And that's, I, I think that's just a really powerful story that De Niro, an actor, essentially saved his director's life because they worked together on Taxi Driver previously. And they went on to work on other movies like Kings of Comedy and Goodfellas together. So guys, Raging Bull. How do I feel about this movie? Well, it's regarded as one of the best, so probably, most likely, I'm going to uh, agree with the majority and say it's one of the best, and yeah, I absolutely am. Guys, Raging Bull is freaking fantastic, guys. This movie, you know what, it, it's, it is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take back a little bit of what I said. It's hard to say that this movie is fantastic because it is incredibly difficult to watch this film. It is a, as a film, it is phenomenal. It has everything you come to expect from a Scorsese film. It looks great. It's shot incredibly well. The editing by Thelma Schoonmaker, who has edited, I, I, I think she's cut most of his movies, um, is fantastic. It's flawless. It's seamless. It feels great. You know, the production value and everything, everything like that is great. Lighting and everything. His choices to shoot certain sequences, the boxing sequences, um, Everything that you come to expect from Martin Scorsese as a filmmaker, as a director, is great and works incredibly well in this movie. But this is a very brutally excessive movie, a brutally excessive character study about a man who was always at his breaking point throughout almost his entire life, especially at the peak of his career when he was a boxer. Robert De Niro's character of Jake LaMotta is not, I think... I think he's not a man that a lot of people were fond of, essentially, back then. This guy what had serious mental and physical problems. He was a very obsessive and over-the-top guy who just always feared that his wife was cheating on him, always feared that men were talking with her, and he obviously didn't like that, always feared that something... He, he always... He, he's very paranoid. He's a very paranoid person. And he always um, I essentially brought out the worst or always brought out this negative... In every scene where he's with Joe Pesci, they're always arguing, or nine times out of ten, they're always bickering. Even though they're brothers, there's still always some sort of argument that he elicits. And all of this tension that he's creating with these interpersonal conflicts with the people he surrounds with in life literally keeps building and building and slowly building throughout this movie until we come to just the final all-out breaking point in one sequence. It's, it's one of the best crafted sequences I've watched in a movie because of all of that, like, tension and all of that like hostility that has just been building and building to a T and De Niro just lets it all out in quite frankly one of the best performances of all time. I thought De Niro was amazing in Taxi Driver. He absolutely is guys. Taxi Driver is one of his best performances. Raging Bull is Robert De Niro's best performance to date. No questions asked. This is his best movie by far. By far his best movie. I haven't seen some of his other movies. I haven't seen Kings of Comedy. I haven't seen uh, his later film. But I, I've basically seen most of his movies where people said, yes, De Niro was excellent in that movie. That's one of De Niro's best. I've seen Godfather 2. I've seen Goodfellas. I've seen Taxi Driver. 
I've seen some movies in the 2000s that he was in that maybe weren't as good. I've seen Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah, okay, so I've seen most of his movies. But I can say by far out of every role I've seen him in, I've never seen a man this uh, um, drastically transform uh, on screen, not only physically in terms of appearance, in terms of what De Niro had to do to gain weight for this role, to keep losing weight, to gain more weight, to gain weight for the beginning and end of this movie, I, I, I've, that alone is a great physical accomplishment, yes, but the performance itself, he dealt so incredibly well into this man's psyche, into the psychosis of this completely unhinged man who would literally break if a feather fell the wrong way, okay? He was just so hostile and so filled with so much rage and hostility and aggression and he just lets it out and lets it affect the people around him. And that is where Raging Bull works the best for me. In De Niro's immaculate, incredibly well-deserved Oscar win for this movie, by far, and also for just how he interacts with other people around him, how this character delves into a worse and worse place. And that's why Raging Bull is a phenomenal movie because of its character study of delving into this one man. De Niro is flawless. He says most of what his character is with eye work and with just facial expressions and just how you see that anger brewing in this man's face. It left me feeling disgusted. And by the time we complete this man's journey or his arc, it is so, it left my mouth on the floor, guys. I'm just going to say this much. There's a scene in a really dark place involving De Niro and a wall. I lost it. I lost it. My mouth was like this. That's literally the best way to describe my reaction to watching that scene in this movie. I was shell-shocked at where that character went in that moment and how it just emotionally charged De Niro's performance was in this in this movie and to just let that all out was such a satisfying moment for me it, it, it it's, it's such an excellent journey and character arc for this main character of Jake LaMotta I loved it I know I've been all right now I know I've been praising De Niro's performance in this movie just briefly Joe Pesci is excellent in this movie maybe he doesn't shine maybe it isn't as memorable as a role as he was in Goodfellas but he is great this was one of his first like breakout roles and he was excellent in my opinion excellent work him and De Niro worked so well off each other in this movie it was unbelievable and his wife Vicky in this movie uh Kathy Moore aired Artie, I, I'm probably saying that wrong, I'm sorry. She was also really good as well in this film. I just, I had to mention that real quick. Now guys, I, I have to talk about, last thing I want to talk about, and I think this is what defines Raging Bull. Earlier in the video I mentioned that Raging Bull is sort of, um, uh, like I want to see Rocky and Jake LaMotta fight, because they're, they're great boxers. I want to see these two duke it out in the ring. Of course I do. Com I, I don't want to compare movies because these are two entirely different movies. And I know that that's weird to say if you haven't seen Raging Bull, you'd automatically assume Raging Bull probably is the same exact thing as, as Rocky. They're both sports boxing movies. No. Rocky is a sports boxing movie that more so inspires you to sort of achieve your dreams, essentially. Raging Bull is more so a character study into a mentally unhinged man and it literally gets worse and worse and worse as the film progresses. And that's the beauty of this film. The boxing sequences in this movie are the scenes that I found the least entertaining. I loved them. I loved how they were shot. I loved utilization of um, the slower frame rate in one of the sequences. And the dolly zoom effect that Scorsese did in Goodfellas. He did it earlier in Raging Bull. In one scene between Lamana and Sugar Ray Robinson. I love that moment so much. The camera just slowly pushes in on De Niro. It's excellent, excellent moment in the film. But apart from those scenes, the scenes that shine the most for me are the scenes where De Niro is having a back and forth at Copacabana with characters. Maybe he gets into a fight with characters. He gets into a fight with his wife. He accuses her of wanting to see other men. He, the scenes where he's just constantly sexually frustrated or sexually insecure about what his wife is doing. You know what I mean? Um... Or scenes where he's just like all out raging out and losing his temper. Like he matched 
freaking Hugh Jackman and Prisoners for sure. Hugh Jackman and Prisoners probably watched this movie before he worked on Prisoners and said, shit, I gotta do that in this movie. I gotta lose my temper that much, okay? I just thought of that off the top of my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, that's what Raging Bull works more as. It's not a boxing movie. It's not a sports movie. Don't go into this movie expecting Rocky II with Robert De Niro. That's not what this movie is. It works so well on its own as this character study about a man who just happens to be a boxer, but about a man who's losing it and takes out his anger and his insecurities on people in the ring. That's why the boxing sequences are so well cut together and spliced into the movie because they're just at the right moment. He has a fight with his wife or he has a fight with Joe Pesci and then cut to boxing scene, beats the shit out of the guy. And that's why his rage is all built up. That's why his nickname in this movie is the Bronx Bull or also the Raging Bull. That makes so much sense. Guys, this is just such an excellently developed character study from beginning to end. The screenplay is flat out amazing from Paul Schrader, who also did Taxi Driver. Excellent work on this screen. Excellent, excellent job on this, uh, this screenplay. It's fantastic. Dialogue is incredible. Um, De Niro perfectly captured just the typically angry Italian man who is even more angry than the typical Italian man. <laughs> Guys, yes, I loved Raging Bull. I know I, I didn't really talk about it on a technical merit and how great Scorsese did a, a, but that's just a given. He just He's a great director. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to direct actors so flawlessly, and it shows so well because of how great De Niro is in this movie. Guys, I know I talked way too much about the screenplay and about the, character, the fact that it's a character study and the acting, but that's what makes Raging Bull so great. That's what I love so much about this movie. Now, I know it sounds like I've been singing this movie's praises, and it has, and I'm going to go as high as I can go with my rating. My one thing with this film, and I didn't feel this way about Goodfellas or Taxi Driver when I saw them, or even The Departed for that matter, because those are my three favorite Scorsese films currently. My one thing with Raging Bull, I honestly want to re-watch this movie and analyze why the film starts with the scene it starts and ends with the scene it ends. Because it's the same scene, it starts with it and ends with it. I don't understand, I mean, I see uh, I see its purpose of showing us where the character is, but I feel it's trying to say something else and I didn't quite catch on to it. In my opinion, I would have shortened this movie a hair and ended it in that scene with De Niro and the wall. Or maybe a scene after that. That's where I wanted to end it, honestly. I was like, this feels like it's almost over. Like, I would end it here. And then it went on for another two more scenes. And I said, okay, this scene is trying to say something. I'm just not quite sure what the final scene of this film is trying to say yet. That said, I'm not going to hold that against this movie. That's just the personal thing with me. I want to rewatch this movie. And boy, oh boy, I won't have a problem rewatching this movie. Guys, Raging Bull is flat out phenomenal. I highly, highly recommend you guys watch this movie. Guys, I'm going to go all the way. Raging Bull gets a 10 out of 10 or an A plus from me. I loved it. One of Scorsese's best, and that's saying a lot because The Departed is there, Taxi Driver's there, Goodfellas is there, and Raging Bull's now there. I don't know which, I gotta figure out my ranking, okay? There you go. And I just did my, my favorite movies of all time video. That segment I'm gonna upload this after. This video totally would have made the list. Totally would have made the list, but Sorry, it didn't. <laughs> Guys, I leave it to you now. What are your thoughts on Raging Bull? Let me know down below in the comments. Is it your favorite Scorsese film? What is your favorite Scorsese film? Let me know down below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching me. I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.